Season two has twice the size of the cast. It has a huge cargo ship that's in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the Pacific. And it's a real-time action thriller in that it moves in real time. The Head Season 2 premieres on HBO Max uh, December 22nd. Um, obviously, this is a different location from season one where you guys were in Antarctica. So other than that, how does this season stand out compared to season one? It's very different, very different in feel and energy. That Season one is more like a chamber piece in that it took place in a very contained uh, situation and it consisted of a lot of flashbacks. It relied on the narrative of the two protagonists, two of the protagonists, Maggie and Arthur. Um, there were three truths, really. There was Maggie's truth, Arthur's truth, and the truth itself. And that was sort of what season one hinged on. Season two has twice the size of the cast. It has a huge cargo ship that's in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the Pacific. And it's a real-time uh, action thriller in that it moves in real time. Real, as much real time as you can have in a series, but it doesn't rely as heavily on flashbacks. So things are happening as they inf- unfold. And I suppose it's much more savage and much more energetic because of that. Mm-hmm. I think that's the main difference. Absolutely. And with this, with the season two being set on a huge cargo ship, what were some of the challenges you had to deal with while filming? Real weather and real boats. Yeah. <laughs> And not being very practical as actors of what to do stranded on a boat at sea. Well, I suppose we have to deal with those elements, you know, but we make do. Um, yeah, just the natural environment that we found ourselves in and putting yourself in the situation of being isolated on the ship while there's a murder going going on. Pets being chopped off. But um, it, 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 for me, it was building on what had already been done in season one and and pushing it and building on new relationships and seeing differences in characters from season one and how John as Arthur has changed and how Catherine as Maggie has changed. And, you know, it was, it was a joy to be integrated into that and Liv is playing Rachel, Arthur's daughter. And, you know, I'm, my character is, uh, in a triangle there. So that's something you was a good way to put in triangle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> triangle. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah, Catherine, I want to ask you this. Uh, at the end of season one, obviously we find out the truth about Maggie, why she's there and what she's done. So what is she looking to achieve in season two? Yeah, I mean, what's interesting, well, firstly, to, we kind of meet a, a more honest version of who she actually is because she's a sort of very innocent imposter but in season one she has this very like succinct plan and at the beginning of season two it kind of unravels and I feel like that that brings in a new kind of energy to her she's not in control anymore and um yeah so that's the question I kind of lost track a little bit (laughs) sorry I'm tired no No, it's fine (laughs) but uh but John, I want to ask you this. When you talk about season one, we see Arthur getting arrested. You know, throughout that season, we thought he was a villain. He was uh, kind of portrayed that way. And at the end, we found uh, we find out, obviously, what Maggie has done. So in season two, would you say he's kind of considered one of the good guys? I think it's important that after everything that's happened in season one, I don't think Arthur will ever be a good guy. Right. I think he's a manifestation of a lot of things that can happen uh, can go skew with in the male ego. Um, I think he's a very uh, twisted, uh, ego-driven, brilliant uh, guy. But I think um, uh, he's not 100% redeemable. But certainly by the end of one, he is broken. That has been shattered. And I think a man like Arthur his his sense of self-worth rests on his reputation. And by then, by the end of one, he has not, even his reputation has gone. He's considered guilty of these heinous crimes. He's taken to prison. He spends a year in prison on remand. He's broken. He's, he's shattered. 
he reassembles himself and he when he's reassembled himself some of the pieces are missing and i think what you see in two i think is somebody who's really struggling to 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 go forward um he still has this desire to solve this huge problem that he believes he can solve which is the issue of global warming um but but he's fractured and and that's an interesting it was interesting for me i think to just to start that way now by fractured i mean that i don't mean that in a bad sense i mean fractured can also mean broken trying really hard to to not be like before or trying hard to have relationships in a different way than he had before most especially um with his daughter most especially with other males who he would have seen as a threat before that it's important to establish it in two that this author is somebody who's really to all intents and purposes and to our eyes is somebody who's new who's really maybe learned maybe learned something so that's important Absolutely. And Mo, I want to, I want to ask you this. You talked a little bit about your character in season two, and he's uh, new to Arthur's crew on that cargo ship. But how would you best describe your character? He, Alec Kurtz, he's been put in charge of this mission and uh, to be a sort of overseer to make sure that it's a success. Mm-hmm. End goal being the cure for global warming, but uh, there's also an invested emotional stake of being involved with Arthur's daughter, Rachel. And how I would describe him is he's a man who has seen a lot of drama, like so many of the crew on, on board the ship. And they all want to have a sort of uh, aspect of, of redemption going forward. But Alec, I suppose, only knows Arthur from what he's heard about from season one, and uh, he's trusting Arthur. He's giving him the benefit of the doubt that here's a man who has been changed by his experience in prison. And uh, even with with Arthur's daughter, Rachel, he confides in Rachel, and he he believes that there is something to be uh, forgiven or believed to Arthur. So he's sort of in the middle of of this, you know, while, while overseeing the mission. So that was a lot of fun to play with, you know. And um, he cares for the crew as a character that was nice to play with. So that it's not all action, action. He, he you know, he cares for the, 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 the crew that he's working with. Absolutely. Catherine, I want to ask you this. Um, you know, at the end of season one, it was surprising because while I was watching the season, I thought, Something wasn't right. Something wasn't adding up when it comes to Arthur being the killer. And then once everything was revealed, I was like, oh, that makes sense. That's perfect. I loved it. So how much did you enjoy Maggie's character arc throughout this season and going into season two? Yeah, I mean, it's a pretty unique opportunity to play almost different characters. Yeah. I I really love the version of Maggie that was created in season one but I always had this sense of who she actually was um so to get the opportunity to explore that in season two was uh, really fun and I felt I had to find a version of her that could believably have committed these acts and to do so I I went deeper into her history her relationship with her mother um and her obsession with Arthur and what what kind of person that that sort of creates and um a, a big part of that was working with um the actor who plays uh, Maggie's sister Shona Q who happens to be a really good friend of mine so we had a lot of time to really develop their their backstory and um we wrote like a little short story of like that will never see the light of day but like the, but just to kind of really um solidify in our minds why they'd done what they'd done and hopefully that then feeds into the uh, Olivia, I guess, who you meet in season two. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully people kind of uh, like see her and see her, the true side of her. Absolutely. And this question is for all of you. You know, one of the things I like about this show is it has actors from all over the world, very international cast is for season one and for season two. So, how much have you enjoyed uh, working together this season? 
Yeah. It's such a privilege. Like we, we're meet, not only meeting, but working with people you not really usually like, cross paths with. And I think that's pretty incredible. I'm one of the elements of the show I'm most proud of. And um, yeah, I think it brings in uh, a whole mix of um, approaches and methods, which teaches you something, inspires you, and then I think helps create a really unique dynamic. But what do you guys think? Absolutely. Uh, it's 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 been a joy. I feel blessed, really, because a year ago, almost this week, I taped for the character, and it's been such a journey. And in a way, old school that Jorge Dorado, the director, likes to choose people, handpick them, and not go to particular producers to ask for their permission. He likes to work with who he likes to work with. And being a fan of season one, the, the freedom from the performances and the, the one takes and his his originality, it was just so exciting to be thrown into the mix and, and see actors from around the world working at top level and just seeing how they work and getting to know them as people and as murder mysteries. It, it was a joy. And, you know, I wanted to work with John for years. It's, it was really a, a, a real gift, really was. It was amazing. It was amazing. And the same. I, Mo and I spent a lot of time together on the shoot and it was a pleasure. It was a pleasure every day. We had to kind of, I, they were running two crews all the time and Mo was either on, with one crew and I was with the other. So we were we were on a lot, Mo and I, and uh, sometimes together. And, um, and being Irish and being together, it was a real bonus, a real gift. Pleasure. Apart from that, I mean, I'm joking. I'm joking. Yeah. Um, um, <laughs> but our... Obviously, the first language of the series is English, yeah. and obviously, there's so many different nationalities. But you know, when it came down to it, really, the language, really, the universal language, is the language of is the scene, the scene itself. And so, what was really exciting was just finding how everybody came at, at a scene in different ways, but we're all going towards the same center, and that's what was really exciting because the quality of actor on this second, especially in the second series. Uh, you know, first series as well. But we're always aiming for the centre of the scene, for the heart of the scene, and that was true right across the board. I mean, it was so impressive um, and uh, and uh, and exciting because it was really exciting because you didn't really know what kind of scene you were going to end up with. You know, on paper it was one thing, but it could it could evolve into something else because of what everything everyone brought to it, and because Jorge had chosen so well, and there was so much talent and so much commitment, um, he trusted us. He trusted us to, to shift things slightly sometimes, to shift the center of, of the story or the narrative, or to nudge it into, into a slightly different place. And that's because he'd surrounded himself with, with really good people, I think. And, you know, to add to that, I thought the ensemble in season one was just incredible, but this group of actors on the ship in season two, they were just, they, they blow you away. They're really, really great, you know. One wee thing that I do really love is I think every character at some point gets to speak in their like uh, native language, and I think that's that means there's ten languages in the show. Especially with the characters on their own, they're going to speak to themselves in their own language. So um, it's just a wee thing about the show which I think is really special. Absolutely, I got a chance to watch the first episode of season two. I enjoyed it. I think it's going to be a great season. So, Mo, uh, Catherine, John, thank you so much for your time. I really do appreciate it. Congratulations on the new season. Mm -hmm.